Okay, guys, good afternoon. <clears throat> My name is uh, Brendan Dean Han. I'm the Chief of Detectives with Chicago Police Department. Today we're here to talk about uh, a task force of detectives that were, uh, was created in order to address the looting incident that occurred on Sunday night. But first, I kind of want to start off by thanking all the officers, detectives, and specifically the residents in neighborhoods across the city for their help this month taking a multitude of violent offenders off the street. Detectives have been working very hard to arrest and charge these offenders. The cases are easier to solve and much stronger when the community identifies these suspects and works with the police and the detectives to hold them accountable. But as I mentioned, today we're here to talk about the task force. So we've created a task force of detectives it was created to pursue suspects involved in the looting that occurred earlier this week downtown and to a lesser extent some of the neighborhoods. The detectives are working very closely with the Cook County State's Attorney's Office in order to secure charges against offenders. Several defendants were arrested Sunday night have already been charged with felonies. We're now seeking the community's help to identify additional offenders that are seen on video and in photographs looting and committing other criminal behavior. I'm going to show a brief incident of what I'm talking about, and this is what's going to be on our website. Uh, this is from the 800 block of North State, so the video should play. At the ATM, he's trying to get into. So that's, this is going to be just an example of the videos that are going to be posted uh, on the website. So the department launched a website today with images of these suspects and others wanted in connection with the looting that took place downtown and elsewhere. So the detectives are asking everyone to look at these images. There's a link on the web page that's going to allow those with information to submit a tip. People, as you saw in the video, you can also call Area 3, Area 3 detectives directly at 312 744-8263. And each of the videos is going to be set up this way, where if you go to the website, it'll have the contact information. Store owners and other individuals that have additional video can also send these images to our detectives from the website. DPD continues to comb through hours of video footage and search through other images that might help identify looters. Our website will be updated as additional video becomes available. So I think what you're going to find is when you go to the website, there's a couple videos up there. We're going to get a couple pictures up there. But detectives right now, as we speak, are you know, in contact with all these stores. And it takes a while to grind out actually getting out there, collecting the video, going through it, and creating this. So it doesn't happen that quickly. But what I wanted to announce today is the website's up and rolling. As you can see by this one video, that guy's sticking his face in his own, his own, uh, it's his own phone, his own camera. He's, he's posting live from whatever platform. But obviously, you should be able to identify that suspect. So um, the website's going to be continually updated, and we're going to be looking to identify these, uh, these defendants. So you'll also be able to find a button on this web page where you can view the names, mugshots, and charges for the individuals that have been arrested and charged 
during this period of looting. So this was just an attack in our city, and we really need everyone's help to identify these offender, offenders so we can arrest and charge them. Camera footage is only valuable when our officers and detectives can identify the individuals caught on camera committing the crime. We need everyone's help to do this. So as I mentioned, I mean, this video is probably the best example, but looking at these videos, someone surely knows the offenders that are causing this destruction. So please help us bring these criminals to justice. We need help to get them off the street and before a judge. These are obviously very dangerous people. The only way to truly restore our collective sense of security and restore order to Chicago is by working with the police to remove these offenders from the street. So I can take a couple of questions now if you guys have them. Yes, sir. Yeah, so anytime, I mean, as you mentioned, I guess uh, anytime somebody's masked, it's just going to make it harder. And now that we're, you know, we've mandated masks and people walking around. But I think what you can see from this video is that defendant you can surely identify. Uh, the other two individuals on there definitely have their masks on. Um, but I believe that um, as we go through the videos and we get better images, uh, for, for example, just your, yourself wearing the mask, if, you know, someone's going to know you even with, even with your mask on. So, yeah, of course it makes it more difficult as offenders are always trying to hide their identity. But I believe that the, uh, as we comb through the videos and we get better videos, we'll push them out there. Sometimes you can even identify many of these suspects by their clothing or any other uh, specific features. So, yeah, it definitely makes it more difficult, but it doesn't make it impossible. And that's where we need the help of, of everybody saying, no, I know who this person is, whether they have a mask on them or don't have a mask on them. Then it's up to the detectives to build a better investigation, uh, you know, to bring it to the state's attorney's office. Those were arrests that we, uh, that we, that we, uh, the police arrested that night. So there, as you mentioned, there were a dozen or more arrests made that night, and that's kind of part of this investigation. So what the detectives are doing now is they're, they're going back. As you can imagine, I know you guys saw some of the videos, just even some people's cell phone videos. It was just mass chaos. So what now the detectives are doing are going back, looking at those individuals arrested, and then we'll see if we can pair them up as we start collecting all these videos to see if any of these defendants that were arrested what um, you know what specifically charges are applicable to them for example looting etc um, if we see them walking out of a store with an item so your question is it worth it for the police department to pursue those people our job is to go and arrest them so the answer is yes. That's what, that, that's what our job is. So when people call the police, they show up. When people are looting downtown, the officers show up. Our job is to go and arrest them. That's our job, and it's worth it to go and arrest them. Is it pressure? I don't want to speak for the, the, the 10,000 officers. Our job is to go and arrest them. I, I mean, I, I think a, a reasonable person, yeah, it'd be extremely frustrating if you put hours of work in and, and then the person, you just see the person the very next day. Uh, but at the end of the day, the, the police officers, we don't, we don't write the law. I don't write sentencing guidelines. Our job is to arrest them and turn them over to the criminal, criminal justice system. And if something needs to change on that end, you know, that's kind of outside my scope. But the officers, once again, you know, at 1 o'clock in the morning downtown, it, you know, it was the officers down there. And it was the officers trying to arrest these people during this mass chaos. And then we did arrest several individuals. And we were able to charge someone with these felonies that go to bond court. So... Yeah, it's, it, it can be extremely frustrating for these officers, but yet, if you call again today, they're going to show up and they're going to arrest them if we have probable cause to arrest, and then we're going to do our best working on the back end of these investigations to charge them with the highest crime applicable, and then whatever happens in bond court, unfortunately, is out of our control. The police shooting. So, as you guys know from yesterday, the, the offender was charged accordingly. Um, the only thing new was they recovered an additional gun from inside the residence. Um, I think there was a bunch of pictures out on social media as well of, of him posting up uh, with guns. Um, so nothing, uh, you know, nothing new besides that additional weapon being recovered. But he, he has been charged accordingly. I think his uh, social media pages kind of speak for himself. That second gun specifically was found in his home. Correct. 
Uh, I, I don't have the specific. I'll make sure News Affairs gets it to you. Understood, yeah. And I understand your question, and I'm not looking to deflect it, like you said, because I am the chief of detectives, and we're kind of doing, obviously, the investigation. So I think the superintendent already spoke about that, and the superintendent is putting a plan together and putting a plan together to execute it so we don't have this problem again, or should a group of people show up downtown, a large group, we have a specific plan in place to execute so this can, won't happen again. But I'm going to kind of defer back to the superintendent's comments that he's, he's already made. So that's why I'm up here today. So I mean, we're, this, this website has just been launched, you know, just, just today. So, so not yet. But as I mentioned earlier, just with many of the, the cases that have been uh, happening throughout the community, uh, we have been getting tips, and that's how the detectives are solved the cases for the murders and shootings. And then specifically when we get this, up, this website up and running, then we expect, we expect the tips, yeah. I mean, I know the community is extremely upset. And we're looking, you know, I mean, normally when you get that good of a shot of someone's facial feature, someone can identify them, and we're asking the community to step up, and, and I believe that they will. So, but it's just up and running, so we're looking for the tips now. So we don't have any rewards uh, posted yet, and um, we're, we're working on that, though. We're kind of working with the business uh, community, um, but right now, I think people just got to identify these people, you know, period. I, I, it just has to happen. You know, uh, I, I would love to see if we can get some reward system involved, but I, I think at this point it's just, hey, kind of do the right thing. If you know who did this, I mean, look at what the hell happened down there. Let's get these people identified and moved on, you know, and get them arrested. So I don't have the specific numbers now, so that was the point of the task force, to go out and collect video. And like I said, this isn't that easy. It's, this is not a TV show. It's cumbersome to go through all these stores and to try to get video. Some of the smaller stores that are boarded up, um, you know, it's very difficult to even get contact uh, with the owners of those stores, let alone get the video. So I don't have specific numbers. The goal is to have the detectives and the officers get out there, contact all the stores, pull all the video, start posting this so we can identify whatever that number may be. So I'm not going to, I don't want to come up here and speculate. You saw how many people were, were downtown. So we want to collect the video, put the images together, and then that's what we're doing, asking for people to help us identify them. Um, you know what, I don't have a specific uh, number. I got a couple of lieutenants assigned from Area 3, and then there's, uh, we always talk about our ATC rooms, our technology rooms. So there's technology, the technology room from Area 3, and then we're asking for assistance from the other technology rooms to give us people. And then depending on how many people we identify, it'll kind of... Um, 40? No, not, no. I, I'm not going to give a specific number, because based upon what we're doing and how many more videos we have to collect and what we have to do, it could get larger or smaller. I would expect it to get larger as we identify people, we add more detectives to the cases, adding additional people to go and arrest the defendants. So I'm sorry, I don't, I'm not going to give you a specific number. The task force, the more important part is not the number, it's getting organized and making sure that we reach every single business, we reach every single business owner, we get the video, and then put it all together. So it's really more uh, when I've gone through this, is being extremely organized and making sure we have the right people in the right place to, to do these videos and cut them. I can assign 100 people, but if you don't know how to put a video like this together, uh, then it's, that, that part's kind of useless. So, yeah, well, obviously, you know, I, I totally understand your question. So the more people we have going out and collecting video, once again, is, is what we want to do. But you also have to be, you have to know how to do it. It's not, it's not that simple. So we have a team together. That's what we're doing. We're getting organized and we're doing it now. Thank you. Thanks, guys.